Crafter. Welcome to Sketchbook Sunday and today we're going to do a chicken in gouache. This was so much fun and relaxing to work on today and it's pretty simple too. So hopefully this time lapse will uh, be all the info you need to uh, to paint along. And if not, if you want a longer version of this and you are a member of Critique Club over on Teachable, let me know and I can put this as a full length lesson. I thought this one might be a little simple to do a full length lesson on, but um, um, but let me know if it's something that would be valuable to you. I've started by sketching with a water-soluble pencil. This is just one of my Spectrum Aqua pencils in gray. Just any sort of water-soluble pencil will be fine. It's going to dissolve as you put your layers of gouache on top, which is really nice. And it means you can kind of rework your sketch and those stray lines will just disappear. Now I'm going to paint the background black. Now you can work on a black paper if you want to with gouache, but I kind of like this uh, paper in my sketchbook, so I figured I would just work right in here and paint in my background. I'm leaving choppy uh, rough edges at the edge of my sketchbook. I don't want to go all the way to the edge and have that paint slip down to the pages underneath. And plus, I think it gives you kind of a pretty painterly border when you do that. And I didn't mix anything with the black. It's just the plain black Arteza gouache. Um, and some colors, as you can see, I still have in the individual little containers that I originally put it in. But the rest of my colors I actually put into a fish and tackle box where I had glued the dividers down so they couldn't leak underneath. And I made sure I had dividers that went all the way to the lid in case the paint cracked and wanted to move around in there. And I find that to be a better solution for storing my gouache because I like to work from it dry. I like it all ready to go. And, um, and it works for me. I'm blocking in while I have the blackout all of the shadows in the chicken. So what I like to do is work dark to light because I find that just like if I'm oil painting, the white just gobbles up everything. So I want to put that in last if I'm going to add it. Uh, so it's a little bit different than other artists might work. It's different than you might work in watercolor, even though um, gouache is simply an opaque watercolor. This method works really well for me. It's also the same way I'd work in pastel. So um, if you're finding you're getting a lot of muddy tones in any of those medias, try doing your darks first and then working light. Now, do you notice those pretty brushes that are on my table? Well, I get to give away 10 sets of these. Um, I am the featured artist over at the Royal and Langnickel website this month for January 2019, and they said I could give away 10 sets of brushes. So I am going to give away these Mythos brushes. There is the unicorn version, which is what I have. It's a seven piece set. And there's also a mermaid version, uh, which a coloring is a little bit different. It has scales instead of the spiral on it. So um, if you are selected as a winner on my blog, then you'll get to pick which kind you want. I think the styles are about the same, like the brush hairs and whatnot. It's just the, uh, the handles that are a little bit different. Now at this stage, I am blocking in color. So I've got my shadows in with the black, and which is weird for me. I know I'm using black. How crazy is that? Um, and then I am blocking in yellow ochre for my yellows, uh, really pale blue for my um, anything I see that has like a cool highlight on it. And then I'm going in with some um, kind of like a, a scarlet red for, and I'm, I'm kind of toning that down with a little bit of the black and a little bit of the yellow ochre for the comb and the wattle for my hen here. Um, I find getting those colors in also helps because you get the values in from have the white of the paper for my lightest values currently. I, I can add white. I will add some white, um, but I have that brightest value. I've got the darkest value from the background and the black shadows, and now I'm getting these kind of tonal areas. Um, but honestly, if you just had black and white, you could do this painting. If you want to do this painting with chalk, if you want to do this painting with pencil or charcoal, you can do that. The values are king, people. It doesn't matter what you use for media. It doesn't matter what you use for colors if you get the values right. But since I know I do want some color here, this isn't a very colorful painting. I wanted to get those colors in early on and kind of um, exaggerate them a little bit. So if you look at the reference photo, which I will link below in the video description, you can kind of see where I'm seeing those tonal, um, those kind of undertones and you can kind of see where I was seeing the cool light like on the beak it had like a little blue cast to it because of the natural light this is such a beautiful photo um, the photographer is, is very talented um, to get that really dark background and have the the hen so well lit uh, so I think that was a really special painting to work from and gouache is just so fun I think that I can see why illustrators and designers use gouache because it's such an immediate medium. It's kind of like markers in that way, but I feel like it's so much more forgiving than markers because you can layer up and you can go opaque so nothing has to be absolutely permanent. You can re-wet areas. Um, 
like if I'm painting something and I want to go in and I want to blend, like I want to put some, um, say I want to put some brighter red on the comb and I want to blend with what's underneath, all I got to do is go have my brush a little bit wet and it will pick up what's underneath and, and merge, I can merge them together. It's just, it's such a wonderful medium. Um, and I would say that if you're maybe an acrylic painter, but you wanted to work in watercolors, but you're frustrated by the transparency, maybe give gouache a try. Or if you're a watercolorist and you kind of like the look of acrylics, but you get frustrated with how fast they dry, give gouache a, dry, a try. Or if you're an oil painter and you're frustrated with the smell or the t drying time, but you love the blendability, give gouache a try. This is a public service announcement for gouache. <laughs> try it today. <laughs> it's such a wonderful medium. I think we, I, I just think everyone would enjoy, well, maybe not everyone would enjoy it, but I do think it's a wonderful uh, medium to play with. It's probably why they give children tempera paint when they're younger. Now, gouache is a little bit more opaque and um, higher quality than tempera in my opinion at least from the tempera that I have tried where tempera paint is a little bit more watery but it is the same like it's a relative it's a it's a water soluble paint that is always water soluble um, now I'm talking about uh, regular gouache or designers gouache not an acrylic gouache an acrylic gouache is basically a really matte acrylic paint but it does um, dry permanent so this gouache here is very inexpensive I think the set of 24 was under 20 bucks or right around 20 bucks and you can keep rewetting it. So that's the other benefit that I like is that I can put it in a palette and leave it and I don't have to um, squirt new out when I want to go work and I, and I don't waste it. If it's on my palette, I could just add water and rewet it. Um, and that's, I hate wasting paint. So this is just the best of, best of all worlds for me. I, I really should use it more because I really think it suits me quite well, my personality and my working style. Um, so it's every time I use it, I'm like, why don't I use this more? It's so much fun and it just mixes with so many other medias so well. It works well over water-based markers. It works well over watercolors. It works well as an underpainting for pastel. It's just, it's just fun. I think because there's been such a, um, um, there's a lot of gouaches that aren't light fast. You know, they're meant for reproduction. They're meant for like book illustrations and things that aren't, they're kind of ephemeral. Um, but there are some light fast gouache out there. This Arteza gouache even has a decent light fastness rating. Um, there I think the M. Graham and the Schmincke gouache have a good light fast rating. So that's really no reason to hold you back, I think, from using this amazing product. Um, and, uh, you know, get whatever you can find, whatever you can afford. It doesn't have to be, you know, anything fancy, precious, or expensive. This isn't. This is just inexpensive stuff. Um, and I'm having a ball. So here you can see I'm going in with the white. I did go with a larger filbert brush. It's probably about a quarter inch filbert. These brushes are really nice for gouache. I think they'd be good for acrylic too. I don't think I would recommend them for watercolor so much because they're not very absorbent, but the stiffness of them um, works with the gouache perfectly. So that's another reason I wanted to use gouache because I knew I got to give away these brushes so uh, or sets you'll get new brushes you're not gonna get my janky old brushes don't worry um but i thought oh that'll be that'll be perfect these do work so well with the gouache and it's a nice variety of sizes too i wouldn't go too big with your brushes for gouache because um well, you know, I guess maybe if you're using something bigger, but generally you're not doing a large painting with gouache. So the downside to gouache is that it's a little bit more, not finicky, but it's a little bit, um, it's less permanent. So you'd need to frame it and matte it under glass like you would a watercolor. You wouldn't do it on a canvas. It can get brittle. You wouldn't use it in thick passages because it could crack. So yeah, there are downsides. I don't want to oversell it because there are definitely reasons why you'd want to use an acrylic or an oil. You want to frame it without glass. You want it to be a little bit more durable. This is not a terribly durable media um but you know with that being said it's so much fun and for a sketchbook where you're growing and you're practicing and you are trying to um grow your skills as an artist i mean what could be better you can work over this with pastels you can work over this with colored pencil um it's a wonderful mixed media tool as well so if you enjoy art journaling or mixed media or sketchbook work like we're doing here it's just such a wonderful either ground medium or um, or layering medium, and it can be layered upon. It's it's just such a it's such a lovely matte finish, and I think that's why designers use it because you can photograph it without glare or scan it without glare. But it's just a dream to work with. It's so much fun. Um, I can't say enough about it. So I'm zooming in a little bit here while I work on the detail. Uh, like I mentioned, this is actually a pretty easy piece. I usually go for something a little more challenging for a sketchbook Sunday, but I was just like I also go with what do I want to paint today? And by golly, I wanted to paint a chicken. So that's what I did. And I just had so much fun with this. It, sometimes it's fun just to, just to paint something that 
you know you're going to enjoy. Not that it's necessarily going to be really difficult, but you just know you're going to like it. And um, when I saw this photograph that was so well done, I'm just like, yeah, I want to paint that chicken. He's just so handsome. She, she's so handsome. It's a hen, I believe. I'm pretty sure it's hen, because um, hens have the, the red things on there too. Um, and I just thought, gosh, she's a beauty. I would just like to, like to paint her. And um, even though I will never raise chickens again, I've already told my family that no more chickens. We gave away our chicken coop and everything, because I don't even eat eggs. But, you know, I was taking care of the chickens most of the time. Um, they're, they are lovely creatures, and... Uh, and I think we should appreciate them. We should appreciate all the creatures out there. And, um, you know, whether you eat the eggs or not, you should have respect for that. The fact that they have, you know, given them to you and just appreciate all the things in our lives. Appreciate your paint. Appreciate your brushes. Appreciate appreciate your chickens. And, um, and I think we'd all feel a lot better as we go about our daily lives. So there we go. Boy, that was an odd little video, wasn't it? Uh, I want to thank you so much for watching. Make sure you head over to my blog, thefrugalcrafter.wordpress.com and leave a comment for a chance to win these brushes. I'll pick 10 winners next Sunday. So um, your odds of winning will be pretty darn good, I would think. I want to thank you so much for watching. I'll also have a link to Critique Club. And if you are in Critique Club and you are dying to see this, if enough of you guys want to see this in a longer format, I will put that up in the Critique Club as well. That's $5 a month if you want extra help growing as an artist. I provide that for you. It's just a little something extra for those that um, really want to push themselves to uh, be a, have somebody accountable and also also just kind of grow in their artwork so it's there if you want it um, that pretty much does it for this painting uh, it was a lot of fun to put together like I mentioned before I do hope you give gouache a try or mix your media so that you can get a similar look and let me know how you got on with this project thank you so much for watching please give me a thumbs up before you go until next time happy crafting <laughs>